years after Ivan, the National Museum is making history. It's getting ready to reopen its doors to the public, and what's inside may surprise you. It's very much more engaging. Um, people can expect to have all their senses stimulated when they visit the museum. We have over 20 people who are part of our exhibition crew who have been working over two years on these exhibits. The first aspect of that is the audio tour and you will see throughout that they're complemented by the panels so you can read about the history of a particular area whether it be turtling or it be island industry or religious life and then you can also listen to audio that describes as well what actually went on during that period of time. Our islands became known as the place where turtles are taken. And we also have three locally based films which depict Long Celia, which is the case of a slave, and The Wreck of the Ten Sails, which is always popular with, with everyone, and likewise The Turtle's Dispute. What we had to do was take and recreate all the exhibits that were in the museum previously. And we hired a company by the name of Wilderness Graphics in Tallahassee, Florida, to undertake that task. We met with them several times to come up with the concepts and the floor plans for the uh, museum that people will be uh, visiting. To be sure that all of the exhibits that were constructed would fit into this uh, space, we literally did a floor footprint of the museum galleries within our studios. Everything had to go through a doorway that was seven feet tall and 45 inches wide. Many of the birds that are exhibited are taxidermy specimens that either came from the Cayman Islands or are migratory species that were salvaged in the United States. The diorama is replicating the mangrove estuaries and the mangrove fringe of Grand Cayman and Cayman Brac and Little Cayman to represent both the above and below the water features. To put the diorama is probably about three months of intensive work. The leaves are cut from plastic and made from silk. They're reattached and glued with wires meticulously painted, attached to model trees. The mangrove tree itself is a complete model, a fabrication of fiberglass. Many of the fish are molded from actual specimens and cast and painted. This is a bittersweet thing for me. I've never been to the museum. This is my first time and it's kind of a really touching situation because my great ancestors actually were instrumental in bringing democracy to the Cayman, James Cole, and that's one of the first persons to do with democracy in Cayman, not also building the Peter St. James. And me being a part of this project, I think it's really nice. I think it's something that every Caymanian, I don't care where you come from, once you Caymanian, I think should have part of this. Okay, this is tradition, this is heritage. It's make you go back and see where you come from. I take the position that a country without a national museum to, to put on display its heritage and its culture is, is almost like a country without a soul. So I think it's very important for us, to, for the general public, uh, to keep up the support of the National Museum. If you have a wonderful experience in visiting the museum, you will tell other individuals. And also we wanted to make sure that every exhibit also had a children interactive component. So it's gauged not only catch the eye visually, but also can catch the hearing. And also down in the object theater, there's a complete audiovisual show that takes place. And that includes both animatronics, lighting effects, as well as a video that depicts the whole history of the Cayman Islands. A very exciting feature for children particularly will be a model of the caves and bluff on Cayman Brac. Children will be able to squeeze through a little crevice and on one side they can push a button and see the features of a cave, stalactites, stalagmites, soda straws, those sorts of, of uh, flowstone features that you find in a cave. The actual sea fans are one that couldn't be imported to the U.S. for preparation there, so those were, were collected and prepared here at the museum support facility. Our representation will include a submarine ride, some very deep dive video from even a thousand meters. The submarine will be a very entertaining feature for children to be able to sit in, imagine as if they were going deep in the water and seeing an ability to watch video of up to 24 different reef creatures. The blue iguana is a specimen that was provided here and with the help of the National Trust we were able to model that. We sent taxidermists here to make models of two iguanas that were salvaged. They were prepared in a laboratory with the help of the Department of Environment. The molds were shipped to Florida and they were cast in a studio there and then re-imported back into Grand Cayman. So this very accurate model of a blue iguana is coming home. We have felt that this is going to be uh, the finest uh, museum 
anywhere and certainly the finest uh, museum in the Caribbean Basin. A soft opening uh, towards the end of this month uh, will give people an opportunity to come in and um, walk through the exhibits and also will give us an, uh, an opportunity to fine tune anything, which is essentially, and then from there on, we roll on out. Despite all the changes, one thing remains the same. Mr. Harvey, the famous fisherman, is still a staple at the museum, ready to greet guests.